Hello, welcome to the talk. I'm Vítězslav Čížek and this talk will be about the upcoming new TLS standard 1.3. Uh, I'm a software engineer at SUSE. I'm mostly doing C stuff and I come in touch with the most popular SSL implementations on open source implementations. I maintain OpenSSL, GNU TLS and uh, also Apache module for NSS. Well, first I'll outline what DLS is, uh, some short introduction, and what are actually the problems with the current current status, current uh, supported protocols. Um, then I'll introduce DLS3, and later how is actually the adoption of DLS3 standard, when we can expect it deployed, and so on. So what is TLS? TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. It's a cryptography protocol that uh, in, in a, enables a secure channel over the internet. It's widely deployed and used uh, for HTTP or for email, VPN, YP, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The architecture of the protocol is client server and the protocol uses uh, public infrastructure to authenticate the peers. Also, there are other options like uh, mm, withdrawing the certificates via Dane or using raw public keys. Well, the secure connection that uh, the TLS protocol establishes uh, has these properties. Uh, it authenticates uh, at least one of the peers. Uh, since TLS 1.3, this is mandatory for the server. There are no anonymous ciphers anymore. And the uh, authentication is mostly done uh, using public key cryptography. Mm, confidentiality is uh, well enabled by the symmetric use of symmetric ciphers. Uh, the data that is transmitted is private to the peers. Uh, it mm, attackers can see into the data. And the protocol also provides integrity, which means that the data can be modified, but uh, all the modifications will be detection detected and the connection will be terminated. And the TLS protocol consists of uh, essentially these two pieces. Uh, the first and the more interesting part for us is the handshake protocol. It's used to establish the keys the uh, shared keying material. It also negotiates the parameters of the connection and uh, it's also used to authenticate one or both peers. The record protocol is uh, the underlying protocol. It, uh, it's used for the data transmission. It cuts the data into the pieces, encrypts them with the symmetric cipher and sends it over the wire. Mm, the TLS handshake uh, looks like this. Uh, first, the client contacts the server, sends a client hello, and uh, a key share. It's uh, both uh, parts of the protocol uh, establish a, uh, the secret, shared secret by using a random nonces, and they are mixing these uh, nonces into a king material, which is uh, the master secret, and all the keys which are used for the communication is derived from this. Well, here's a brief overview of the history of the SSL or TLS protocol. At the beginning, in the 90s, it was called SSL and it was developed by Netscape. Uh, the idea was uh, basically to enable internet banking so people can uh, use their credit cards over the HTTP. Uh, the protocol is uh, obsolete for a couple of years. Uh, it has major issues. Mm, and there's actually an RFC that prohibits its usage. The same goes for TL, uh, SSL 3.0. Mm. And <coughs> the following protocols are currently in use. Most, mostly we are using TLS 1.2 now because it's the most modern variant of the protocol and offers the best features and best security. And also there was a, a big well, paradigm shift in the mindset. So, uh, because there was a lot of attacks against TLS protocol. So since a couple of years ago, uh, the new versions of the protocol are deployed more aggressively and also we are moving uh, 
to more secure keys. Well, here are some couple couple of uh, deficiencies funded as a survey too. Uh, the protocol is uh, well mostly unusable because uh, an attacker could uh, terminate the connection because uh, there's no signaling of the end of the transfer. The connection is terminated. The SSL connection is terminated as uh, a, as the TCP underlying TCP channel is uh, killed. The hashing messages are also not protected, which uh, well, is susceptible to many little middle attacks. And uh, uh, for example, the attackers could downgrade the negotiating ciphers. It also has a weak MAC, which is a message authentication code, which is used for integrity. And uh, both keys for the encryption and for the MAC are the same, which uh, is also a problem if um, if one of the protocols is weak. And compared to the new, new versions, of, uh, also it misses a lot of functionality. Uh, and not even security, but also uh, in extensibility. As a 3.0 was a protocol that was actually killed by a doc. Do you know which one? Yep, it was called by Poodle. <laughs> oh. And it was a padding oracle, uh, padding oracle attack uh, on this legacy encryption uh, because uh, SSL 3.0, uh, the best cipher that uh, was available in the protocol is uh, AES in a CBC mode. But uh, this pool attack can be leveraged to actually decrypt the plain text without uh, a big hustle. So after this attack, uh, SSL 3.0 was abandoned because it was well, no, no longer considered secure. Um, uh, well, the other used cipher that uh, was used by this protocol was RC4, but the cipher uh, is also considered broken. Now, here are some other issues with SSL 3.0. What's that? Uh, there are no suitable ciphers because uh, the C2C mode is basically broken by the poodle, and RC4 is weak and also biased. Other issues uh, are with the composite CBC mode um, because TLS uses uh, this uh, Magdan encrypt construction, uh, which is also vulnerable to, other, to attacks, uh, to Oracle attacks like Lucky 13. Well, the key exchange, uh, key exchange is also vul vulnerable to many middle attacks. There was attacks uh, against the negotiation and also a triple hash check which was combination of uh, resumption and reneg renegotiation. Mm, the hash functions which are used by the protocol uh, uh, SHA-1 and MD5 are also no, no longer considered secure. Mm, this protocol had something uh, that's called uh, custom cryptographic primitives. So the peers can actually negotiate some cryptographic primitives and that's risky because uh, they might not be reviewed as uh, the usual pieces, building blocks of the SSL protocol. Again, uh, missing functionality is a big, big issue also because uh, mm, the security issues which are shown on the left uh, were fixed in TLS 1.0 by using a TLS extension, which is a mechanism that uh, well, opens the possibility to extend the protocol. Well, here's a sum of list uh, of the attacks against TLS. So I grouped them into several groups. Uh, this ISCBC mode was vulnerable to attacks like Beast, and the uh, aforementioned Poodle, Lucky Microseconds, and Magdan Encrypt construction is also broken. Uh, and comp compression is another well, often misused feature of the protocol. There were attacks, crime, time breach, the beast attacker was actually the first one uh, who used uh, this sketchy nickname. And the other, other attacks basically followed. And a hard bleed issue, which was actually a, not a protocol issue, but uh, an implementation issue in OpenSSL, brought all this marketing stuff to publishing vulnerabilities. 
Mm, well, uh, also a problem with RSA is uh, the picky CS 1.5. Uh, it's known to be broken since 90s by uh, a cryptographer named uh, Daniel Bleichenbacher, and all the attacks, uh, the Klimas attack robot and Berserk are all days all based on the same thing. They are basically reiterations of this attack. RC4 is broken because uh, it's just too old. And MD5 and SHA-1 are also not considered as secure anymore. And another often broken feature is a renegotiation, which also was targeted for several attacks. Well, here are some other security issues. Uh, well, the protocol got quite complicated over the years. So, the implementations not, don't always get it right. So uh, there were a couple high-profile vulnerabilities like Heartbleed, Berserk, or a smack which was attacked actually on the state machines of the SSL implementations. And also there's uh, hundreds of other bugs. Mm, a weak cryptography or mostly the legacy stuff, like export ciphers, which uh, are, are with us uh, since the 90s. They actually leveraged several attacks uh, which were downgrading the protocol to unsecure ciphers. Uh, there are two interesting inter uh, RFCs. Uh, one is summarizing the NAM attacks against TLS, and uh, the other one are recommendations for secure use of the protocol. Okay, let's... Uh, yep. Sorry. Okay, so we have some basics behind us, and uh, now let's uh, see what TLS 1.3 is doing. Uh, it's a brand new standard, which is basically freshly developed. Uh, the development is led by IETF, which is an organization that uh, is taking care of uh, web standards. Uh, the development started uh, four years ago, and uh, well, it took actually much longer than expected because there were several obstacles on the way. Um, the standard is developed uh, in a very open way. Uh, there's a, the GitHub link, what you see, that, that's actually the specification that was submitted for approval. And uh, besides the GitHub, uh, lots of uh, discussions uh, about the protocol are going on the IETF mailing list. Well, as the development was taking so long, and it was more open than uh, previously, um, this brings a lot of benefits, like uh, several actually independent implementations were <coughs> implemented. And the protocol was uh, also formally verified. <laughs> the, the handshake was verified and uh, this uh, state, state automat. Well, these are the design goals of TLS 1.3, as uh, outlined by Eric Rescola, which is the principal author of, of this protocol since SSO 3.0. So the first big uh, thing was to clean the protocol up, to remove a new stuff, obs obsolete stuff, risky stuff. Mm. The other objective was to use modern, secure cryptography. And other is uh, to increase the privacy of the users. Because, uh, uh, well, the channels like DNS are going to be more private uh, and encrypted in the, in the future. And so uh, is the plan of the TLS protocol. Well, as for performance, uh, the goal was to speed up the handshake because it's, uh, it's still a giant overhead. It's not the same as it was in the past where using the public cryptography was a big obstacle and it took a huge amount of CPU time, but the CPUs got faster, but still, uh, and also, the, one of the biggest goals was actually to be backward compatible as much possible because uh, there are setups and not everyone is moving um, forward and using uh, the newest tools available. 
Okay, now for the cleanup. These are the victims that fell prey to the cleanup of the TLS 1.3 protocol. There are these uh, custom DHE groups. There were actually mostly unused and server will have to guess and size that's acceptable for the protocol, but uh, this feature was mostly unused. And other, well, not so widely used uh, feature was point format negotiation. Well, all the clients and servers mostly use the Angobras format and TLS 1.3 removes this completely and there's just one format for each curve. Uh, another thing that's gone is DSA and also other not so popular ciphers like Camellia or Area. They were actually part of the protocol in the beginnings but they were removed later on. And another thing that is gone is renegotiation. Uh, the protocol was largely simplified. And the hand, uh, hand, handshake was restructured and several things were gone. And when there, that was possible, things were merged together or just reduced to a, a basic set. For example, uh, session resumption in TLS 1.2 and uh, pre-shared keys got merged together because both of them uh, we're doing basically the same thing. And renegotiation was uh, removed completely and replaced by two separate mechanisms. Uh, the renegotiation thing is convoluted and it was source of uh, several vulnerabilities, for example, the triple handshake. Mm. Well, what we have now instead, uh, we now have the key update mechanism because uh, one thing for, for which the renegotiation was used uh, was to actually update the traffic keys, which is thing you might want to do because uh, if you are encrypting with a key too long, mm, you, you may run out the secure amount of data you can transfer. And also if you are using the same key for months, then I guess it's time to update. Well, uh, another thing uh, for which renegotiation was used, uh, is the post hashing authentication. <coughs> um, why the, the server, uh, I mean, why the client authentication was used uh, after the handshake? Well, one thing is uh, that uh, you can, uh, doing it like this, the client certificate will be transferred encrypted. So it's uh, a good thing to have against, uh, let's say, a massive dragnet surveillance. And uh, another thing is uh, why it's done after the handshake is because there are actually uh, lots of corporate websites that uh, are partially uh, partially well secured. So uh, um, there are some protected resources, and uh, when you are browsing through the website, then you and you stumble upon something that uh, is supposed to be protected, then the server asks you for the authentication. Uh, this thing was actually removed uh, early in the process of uh, standardization of TLS 1.3, um, but uh, several drafts later, Microsoft came that they are using this. They have uh, a large customers that are. Uh, using the corporate websites and they needed authentication. And uh, people were quite unhappy because the renegotiation thing uh, was finally gone. It caused lots of trouble before, but uh, instead of uh, putting this thing back, uh, this new uh, post handshake authentication was introduced. Okay. <laughs> okay, security improvements. Uh, again, a lot of things were dropped. Compression. Um, again, source of uh, lots of attacks. And it was, actually no one, no one knows how to implement it properly. There were attacks like cry, crime time or breach, which was actually on the HTTP level compression, but uh, compression on any level less encryption usually causes trouble and there were several attacks that were uh, able to using well, uh, repeated it, uh, chosen plain text attack. They were actually able to figure out uh, HTTP cookies and things like that. Export ciphers, again, a uh, sync of the past, gone. 
RC key, uh, key exchange uh, is gone to, uh, uh, I mean, RC certificate state, but uh, this key exchange is gone because it's uh, just too slow compared to elliptic curves and it doesn't offer perfect forward secrecy. Mm. RSA PKS S15, uh, again, uh, it's known to be broken since the 90s. Uh, other thing that's gone, uh, non, uh, well, any, any safer that uh, don't offer authenticated encryption. And also static uh, diffie Hellman <coughs> exchange because uh, this thing wasn't used and doesn't offer PFS. Well, so. Here's again the list of the attacks I showed previously and compression gone. Non-A8 ciphers, that also includes RC4. Again, RSA gone. So basically all these classes should be eliminated in TLS 1.3. Okay, so what, what's left? Um, the ciphers in TLS all 1.3. Uh, uh, what's different? Uh, okay, I'm gonna jump right here. This is how the TLS 1.2 and 1.3 ciphers do look like. In TLS 1.2, the ciphers also outlined the key exchange and the authentication mechanisms. Uh, but this was split off and it's now negotiated separately. Mm, TLS ciphers are now just much shorter than just provide the uh, encryption and MAC. The authentication in TLS 1.3, it's uh, either by the certificate or by a pre-shared key, which is used for resumption. The key exchange is uh, RSI is gone, so all the ciphers are um, Diffie-Hellman exchanges and does uh, offer perfect forward secrecy. Well, here's the complete list of TLS 1.3 ciphers. There are just five of, five of them. Uh, just AES and ChaCha -cha is left. All other uh, stuff was removed uh, to simplify the protocol because uh, well, if you have fewer choices, then you have fewer chances to actually <laughs> implement it improperly. Okay, so for a key exchange in the TLS 1.3, uh, elliptic, uh, elliptic, uh, elliptic curves are used. Uh, these are these uh, NIST ciphers and uh, also Daniel Bernstein's uh, X25519 and X448. Uh, finite field, uh, Diffie Hellman also remained, but uh, for example, OpenSSL doesn't, uh, didn't implement it and they don't plan to. Mm, for authentication, uh, RSA still can be used, but uh, there are modern variants which could be used instead. And as I said, for encryption, everything is perfectly forward secure. We have uh, SGCM and ChaCha. -Cha. And this one cipher is mandatory to implement for all, all implementations. Okay, so to summarize uh, this cipher pruning, uh, in TLS offers uh, just a few, but uh, very good choices at the moment. There are just five cipher suits uh, from which one is mandatory. And there's one single po point format for each curve. There are no negotiation anymore. Okay, speed up improvements. The hinging was speed up, uh, one run trip was shaven off. Uh, well, in most cases. The full handshake now, uh, takes just one round trip and the resumption can be used even with a zero round trip. Uh, the round trip uh, means, well, the way to the server and back. And uh, it's basically the start, uh, num <coughs> the amount of round trips uh, until the data can be transferred through the protocol. Okay, so this, uh, here are, Handshakes for 1.2 and 1.3. These are the general hack, uh, handshakes. Mm, TLS 1.2 takes uh, two round trips because uh, client uh, 
<laughs> sends uh, first the ciphers to the server, uh, then the server picks uh, one of the cipher suites and uh, uh, sends back uh, his uh, key share, which is a uh, uh, Diffie-Hellman group, um, to be used for negotiation uh, of the security material. Um, then the client uh, sends its key share and we are finished and we can send the data. In TLS 1.3, well, it's visible here, yeah. looks so. Mm, the difference between uh, 1.2 and 1.3 is that uh, in 1.2 the client uh, was very pessimistic. Uh, it well, was like, uh, I don't know what the, the server can be doing. There's just too many options and ciphers to choose from. I'll uh, send everything I support and I'll let, let him pick something. Uh, whereas in uh, TLS 1.3, mm, the protocol is uh, much more optimistic. Um, there are several limited choices which uh, actually intensify this. Uh, so as we are only a, uh, have a couple of ciphers, we have a uh, couple of the uh, mm, groups to choose from. Then uh, the server just, uh, I mean the client, just uh, guesses. It prepares a key share for some of the groups which uh, will be negotiated and send this, sends it over the server. Well, the server looks at the choices and um, determines uh, whether they are fine or not. If they are fine, then he just uh, uh, sends uh, the client back one of his key share. He also sends back the certificate and the signature of the certificate, which is a proof that uh, he's actually owner of the certificate and can't encrypt and decrypt the data visit. Uh, one route has been shaven off and the server can, and the client can transmit data. Uh, this is basically what I just said. Uh, the key share offered from the server uh, can be for more groups. For example, the client can send uh, P256 and uh, X25519 and if the server supports uh, either of them, you can just pick one and send the single key share for it. Well, this is nice, but uh, it's not guaranteed that the client will guess right. So what happens when the client gets wrong? Now we are back to the two round trips. Uh, this is the worst case in TLS 1.3, but uh, shouldn't be that common because uh, the choices are quite limited and some of them are mandatory for each uh, implementation. So what happens now? The client sends some, some, uh, send something, but uh, the server uh, looked at it and um, uh, wondered, well, you are sending me uh, these groups, but I would like to use uh, something else that uh, P256 because it was generated from some magic seed and I don't like that. I would like to use um, X448 instead. So it uh, sends a hello retry request and after that, the client sends a new client hello with a single key share for the selected uh, the Philhaman group. The group that the uh, server picked uh, must have been listed in the supported groups by the client. So basically this uh, worst case is uh, as good as uh, the usual case in TLS 1.2. Uh, we can actually do better. And we can use uh, something called resumption, which is used uh, <coughs> to uh, shaving off a right round trip. Uh, in the past, it was mm, the idea behind it was uh, mostly that the public key cryptography is too expensive, so we want to amortize the cost. So we want to avoid uh, computing uh, large RSA, uh, computing with large RSA keys. So what is done instead? Uh, can go back. Uh, this is the full handshake and. There are two mechanisms in 1.2 uh, for the session resumption. Uh, there's a session, uh, session ID which is transmitted during the handshake and there's also a session ticket which is transmitted after that. And TLS 1.3 uh, doesn't use uh, any of these mechanisms, it has its own. So, 
So uh, what's uh, here different during this uh, session resumption? Well, the client sends again uh, the client hello, but uh, uh, previously uh, got from a server a pre-shared key or a session ticket. And using this key, the client uh, there uh, the client and the server exchange the shared material already, so they they can uh, skip the negotiation and also there's no authentication because uh, the peers are authenticated by uh, having the pre-shared keys. There's no need for a certificate because uh, the client verified uh, the service identity during the previous during the previous connection. Well, here's something about perfect fallback secrecy. That's a it's a good thing to have because uh, if uh, the traffic is got compromised, that uh, perfect uh, fallback secrecy says uh, that the attacker, even with the compromised keys, can decrypt past connections. When uh, Intel S one or two, uh, well, with respect to the certificate. Uh, the connections are perfect for that secure only uh, when the Diffie Hellman key exchange is used. Uh, if RSA is used, then um, there's no perfect perfect for that secrecy because uh, having the private certificate of the server, the attacker can decrypt even the past connections and recover the shared secret for them. And uh, using this uh, ticket mechanism for pre shared keys in TLS 1.2, there's no perfect for that secrecy because. Mm. And if the attacker gets to know the pre-shared key, then he can decrypt all the material, all the traffic from now on. And TLS 1.3, with respect to the certificate, we have perfect forward secrecy because all the ciphers are now the Fihoman FML. And with the pre-shared key, uh, we can use something which is called uh, PSK ECDHE. That means that uh, we are actually using pre-shared key with DV Hellman together. And if we are, uh, there's also another option to use just uh, pre-shared key alone, and we are basically back to the TLS 1.2. Here in the resumption, um, in TLS 1.3, there's an additional key share message, uh, which basically means that uh, the Diffie Hellman groups will be negotiated and uh, secret material will be derived using this algorithm. So instead of using the pre-shared keys uh, from now on, uh, after handshake, we will have a brand new keying material. Okay, so basically most of the connections using TLS 1.3 are just one round trip, but uh, we can actually do better. We can even reduce this one round trip and send, send the data during the first flight. Uh, this is done uh, using the early data extension. Uh, this is how it looks uh, when TLS 1.3 is used uh, with the early data. The early data um, can be used uh, with the pressure keys, so instead of uh, waiting uh, uh, after the handshake, uh, the data can be sent right over because uh, we have keys already. We have the pre-shared key and we can encrypt the traffic and send it over. Well, with the zero RTT data, the early data, uh, it works like uh, client sends an extension that is able to send zero RTT data and uh, the server can later decide uh, if it'll use the data or just uh, discard it and return to the one, one RTT basic mechanism. Or you can agree and uh, proceed with the parsing the early data and signaling the bird by this uh, early data extension. Uh, 
but there's a issue with replay attacks because uh, when the, an attacker captures the clean hello, he, he or she can actually replay it against the server, and it will look like completely legitimate use. So there are some anti-replay protections. Uh, if the ser server could save the zero RTT state, then uh, it would be pretty easy to actually tell that, well, I got this in the previous fight, so this must be a replay. I will just discard it. Well, the problem is that uh, servers are not just uh, one machine anymore. Uh, it could be, a, if you are a content provider, you, you can have servers geographically spread, and there's uh, no chance you can persist, uh, you can keep a globally consistent state. But there are some protections in the protocol that could be used to prevent this. Okay, here are some traffic countermeasures that uh, were, are implemented in TLS 1.3. Um, more parts of the handshake were encrypted. Uh, for example, the server certificate is now encrypted and using the post handshake authentication, the client certificate could be encrypted too. Um, record content is now encrypted. Uh, the old, well, old field for type just now says uh, application data for everything and the real content type is hidden, encrypted in the in cipher block. Um, TLS 1.3 also implements uh, arbitrary padding. The padding can be added at the record, so the attacker can, well, can guess uh, the size of the transferred material anymore. And for SNI, Mm. There's a proposal to use to smuggle it uh, in the zero RTT data and to use some kind of front, front server and a hidden server. So you will connect to a server, send it a bogus SNI, and the real SNI will be hidden in the zero RTT data, which is encrypted by by the pressure key. But this is still in progress. Well, compatibility with the previous versions. Um, there was, uh, <coughs> during development, this was one of the biggest obstacles we delayed the development of the standard for the longest. Uh, there are some middle boxes on the internet. There are machines which uh, usually examine TLS traffic and then decide whether it will allow it or drop it. Uh, they usually perform a manual man attack uh, against the TLS connection. So instead of connecting to a ser server which you want, uh, you will be connecting to this middle box and which will terminate the connection there and it will connect to the server uh, on your behalf and then will transfer the data. These machines are used to mostly security scanning. Uh, but uh, these are usually some black boxes uh, which are actually not well maintained and some of them don't like new versions. Uh, the version on the wire of the TLS protocol is called 3.4. And this uh, for historical reasons, because uh, SSL 3 was 3.0 and all the following TLS versions just incremented the number. So the solution to well, pass TLS 3 uh, through, the, through these machines was well, to camouflage the TLS protocol to look ju just like TLS 1.2. So for example, the version of the protocol is now, it was frozen and it's uh, using the 1.2 and the real version is actually, has been moved to the extensions. There's a supported versions extension which holds the real version. And also the new key share mechanism it has to be moved to a separate ex extensions and uh, also the pre-shared key me mechanism is implemented using extensions. The hello retry request is uh, camouflage as server hello. That's because uh, if it, uh, well, the machines wouldn't understand a new 
handshake message and well terminate the connection. So instead, uh, the server hello is used and a bogus value is set in the random. Uh, on the change server spec specification, uh, change server spec message which was used in TLS 1.2 to signal that uh, all the traffic from now on will be encrypted it was dropped in TLS 1.3, but uh, the impl implementations are allowed to actually use it for better compatibility with the older protocols. And there's uh, something called Grease, which is a mechanism to keep their server um, <clears throat> more agile, and so they got used to newer stuff seen in the protocol. Uh, there's a proposal which will uh, add some random data to various fields in the protocol, so keep the servers from uh, and implementations from ossifying. Well, the last one, the three. There are some issues which uh, users might run into. Uh, the ciphers are no longer compatible with TLS 1.2 because uh, the key exchange was moved to a separate negotiation. So, uh, for example, using uh, ec string in OpenSSL server won't list any TLS 1.3 cipher suits. So that's uh, things uh, to watch out uh, for when you are using explicit cipher strings in OpenSSL. Uh, sessions are not established after the handshake. Uh, there's a special API for this because uh, previously the sessions were established before uh, DSR certificates are gone and renegotiation and the compression was removed. So uh, if a TLS 1.3 implementation encounters renegotiation and compression, it will terminate the connection. Okay, so uh, we have a very new standard and uh, when we can expect that it will be deployed. Well, the draft was recently approved as a proposed standard by IETF and it is scheduled for becoming an RFC soon. Well, the adoption was actually quite good considering that the protocol wasn't uh, fully ratified yet. <clears throat> Most of the SSI implementations uh, are at least working on implementing the draft. Uh, in OpenSSL, uh, everything is implemented, but uh, there was no actual release. Uh, everything is in master, but uh, this upcoming 1.1.1 version is uh, scheduled in a few weeks and may, may be released very soon. Uh, the same goes for GNU TLS. Everything will be enabled and fully implemented in 3.6.3. In NSS, uh, the support is, uh, well, since the beginning, because NSS was actually used for the first TLS 1.3 connection over the internet, so. And uh, the Eureka Shareskolga guy, for example, who is uh, the author of this TLS standard, is uh, employed by Mozilla in working on implementation. And Microsoft, uh, well said, it's in the development. And uh, Apple is set to implement it, this actually, already. Well, supporting web browsers is also very good. Uh, Chrome does support it and it's actually already enabled. Uh, the same goes with Firefox. Uh, uh, there the well, adoption is being gradually enabled. You can check it uh, in about config. Uh, for Safari, um, it's implemented, but it's off, and Edge, again, in development. Well, web servers, uh, Nginx has perfect support for quite some time. <clears throat> IIS, not yet. And Apache, well, currently the only chance is using mod NSS. Well, other applications which are very useful for this is, uh, is Varshak, and it has perfect support for dissecting the TLS model 3 protocol. Okay. This message which indicates end of TLS connection also ends my presentation now. And you said the uh, Hello. Um, 
So you said the uh, server should keep a uh, state for the zero round trip stuff for how big is the window? Uh, you mean uh, like keeping? Yeah. Can it should it keep a state for one hour? And if a package is order when one hour, like comes with times and order when one hour, it can automatically discard it or how long? Yeah, for uh, if you mean uh, to prevent the replay attack, there's uh, actually support in the protocol. There, there's a timestamp which uh, the server will check. And uh, for example, if it uh, gets the zero RTT data, and then it gets well, minutes later, then it will just discard it because it was too late. So how big is the window in the standard? Well, it depends up the, uh, upon the implementation. Oh, but usually very close because uh, there, well, seconds, it, uh, it's too much. Okay, so the second question is, um, SNI is not in 1.3 or still? Uh, yes, and it's even mandatory now. Uh, yeah, but you said the encryption for it is like still in discussion. Yeah, the, well, the uh, this, if you mean encrypted SNI until 1.3, then that it's not implemented yet in the standard. There's a proposal for doing that, but it actually needs collaboration with other protocols. So this is not done. So as per your expertise, what's your expectation? I mean, to how long will it take uh, to switch to TSL um, 1.3 for the servers that, I mean, like some servers will still run the old version or in compatibility mode, so some old yeah. vulnerabilities can be used. And um, the second question, are we moving into the direction that actually the client side also will have the certificate and it will be verified? Uh, so, okay, so first I will answer the second question, uh, first question. Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with TLS 1.2 when, when configured properly, because uh, we have secure ciphers, they are basically safe. That's one of the reasons, for example, why Libra SSL didn't implement 1.3 at all for now, because the standard was developing and TLS 1.2 is good enough for use now. Uh, uh, could you repeat the second question, please? Uh, the second question was, uh, if you're moving into the direction that the client side also will have the certificate, which will be verified. And so we not only validate the uh, server's certificate, but also on the client side, we have kind of a password. Well, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, I mean, so we, uh, the, when we initialize the connection, we verify that certificate is valid for the server and for the for, for connection to the server. But the server doesn't validate the uh, because client doesn't basically have a certificate, so uh, connection yeah. can be from anywhere. And is there any movement for I don't know maybe some specific areas where this is applied, so the both sides are validated? Well, uh, the, no, it's not. Well, the client ciphers are basically an issue. So there's, uh, I don't see anything while moving it in front. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you.